Hey, True Believers England team here with uh, Marvel Legacy, Voices Legacy. Um, look, here's the thing. I, I, I got to admit, I'm not a big fan whenever they're like, hey, we're going to focus on this demographic because never do they ever allow those characters to be fully fleshed. They never do. And that's one of the big problems. This, uh, I didn't like the uh, indigenous voices one very much, but at least, at the very least, I could say that was an anthology book. It had individual stories. They actually did build upon uh, characters and everything, and that's what a story should do. should always move the, the character forward in some way, shape, or form. This isn't even that. This is uh, a, a whole bunch of vignettes. <laughs> Seriously, it's just... Uh, Two pages here, two pages there. There's hardly ever a story or, or a couple of pages, a pamphlet, if you will, that's put in here that uh, touch upon the characters themselves. You can literally switch. It doesn't matter if they're black characters or white characters or whatever. You could take the characters in this book out of the story, put them aside, bring in a white character, bring in a Martian, bring in whatever you want. It's going to remain the same story. And that's a huge problem. Uh, with a book called Marvel Voices Legacy. Anyway, you know what? Enough talk about. Let me show you. And uh, so sit back, relax. Let's get this party started. Okay, before we get started, great cover. I like it. I really do. I would get rid of the Celebrating Black History Month thing so it looks more like a poster cover. Um, it's got the Marvel Voices on the uh, on the bottom, but that's Okay. I would put the Celebrating Black History thing on the back there so it didn't mess up the art. But beyond that, this is a really nice cover. And, of course, we have the chapter, uh, the chapters here, and that tells us who to either blame or to celebrate. There's not much cause for celebration. And, Lord Almighty, John Ridley, you are, you, you know what, you, you can maybe write a fine script, but you're not a comic book writer. But judging by the two pages here, he is a Hallmark card writer. Uh, it's called Words Do Matter, and it goes, You. You are. You are different. You are, difference crossed out, distinct. You are strange. You are, strange is crossed out, singular. You are alone. You are, alone is crossed out, one of many. Words do matter. Your life is your story. Don't let anybody else write it for you. Love, Grandma. Okay, now, some might go, oh, wow, that's very, very profound. No, it's a Hallmark card. And what's worse is it's a, that's a Miles Morales story. It has nothing to do with Miles Morales. says nothing about the character. says nothing about John Ridley's take on the character. And don't give me the two pages thing because you're going to see in just a little bit that some actually do very well that was absolutely a waste of two pages seriously does not even need to be in the book says nothing next up we get a story starring riri williams uh ms marvel and shuri and it starts off with this action scene nothing really bad she's a bit arrogant you know the whole uh, i'm better than you thing that we saw bendis excel in and they might as well just say this is Riri Williams. She's kind of like a little mini Doctor Doom more than a little mini uh, Iron Man. And why not? She did take over Lepvarian, one of the most ridiculous storylines ever put to comics. The weird thing is, is, and I'm, t I'm telling you, this is the weird thing. Okay, the story should have started right here where we get Riri coming in and they're doing a little uh, get together, the three of them. And it's just talking. And it's just getting to know the characters. Now, whether or not you like them or not, that's up to you. But this is very slice of life. This is the opening to any comic book. Structurally, this is okay. I'm not saying that the dialogue is fine. It's actually kind of boring to me. I, I, I didn't really get into it, but I don't. I think it was more written like, hey, I hope teenage girls like this. When all of a sudden they hear that there's a giant attacking New York and they all fly off and that's the end of the story. Um, and I'm, I, I, I got to admit, I was wanting to see them fight the giant. By the end, the dialogue actually grabbed me enough to make me want to find out what was going on with the fight of, in the giant. Now, let's flip this. Instead of 
the first two action pages being there. You start it at the door. She goes in. You have the conversation. They go fight the giant. It's all about the characters. You're actually learning about the characters, which is why I called bullcrap about uh, John Ridley's two pages. We got to know those characters. Miles Morales is in some sort of battle, and he's talking or joking or doing something. You get an idea of who he is. The John Ridley segment was stupid. This one, I'm, I'm, I actually kind of enjoyed. Like I said at first, I didn't, but I, I see the potential. I see the potential there. They just should have flipped it where the action scene was at the end. And in the dialogue, during the action even, we could have gotten more story and more personality. So there you go. Panic at the Supermarket. I should have been reading off the titles of all of these in the first place. Sorry about that, guys. Panic at the Supermarket by Stephanie Williams and uh, Natasha Bustos. Two people took to write this. The The Avengers shouldn't be here. I'm not even going to talk about the art because IDW has cartoon art and it works fine because the stories are fun. This is trying to tell a story of how... Uh, parents take care of us young, we take care of them old, except for it's a little bit reversed in the order here. I think this would have done better had it been just between Monica and her mother and they were in normal clothes. A lot of the jokes fall flat. It's trying to be a visual gag about the Avengers doing normal shopping, which I thought it kind of, it actually works against the story that's being tra uh, trying to be told anyway. Um, once again, it's not horrible. I just think that the art works against the story. Or at least the point of the story. Next up, we have uh, let me let me get this one right because the name uh, "Good Luck Girl" by Toshi Onyabushi and Ken Lashley, and uh, it is probably the most comic bookish of all stories. Like this, you could probably expand it a few more pages. Give us why she's there, why Domino is there. Give us you know what she's after, what are the motivations? Because in this case, she's just sitting down. She's talking about luck. And it's okay. It's just, it really is just Dixie Cup deep. And there is a, a bit where they're like, like right here, it's like, Domino? And she's sitting right there, guys. You know, it's not like, oh my gosh, we finally realized who you were. Um, but overall, if you, th this is the comic book action scene right here. There's not much more. There's not much less. We know what her powers are. Although at one point in time, her luck is she sees a bullet firing at her and she moves. And I'm thinking, no, no, the luck would have to be something flying in front of her, you know, something improbable happening, which of course her dodging it, seeing it and dodging it is impossible, not improbable. But, um, I think that would have, uh, would have been a little bit better. Otherwise, once again, it's, it's, uh, it's your typical comic book action scene. So, Okay. This, uh, Aluta Continua, I was looking at this one and I, I, I read it and I'm like, who is this one for? It's by Nettie Okarafor and Criss Cross. The band? Jump, jump. I, so I read it. It's about uh, a, a riot or a protest in Africa and the lights get shut down and they're like, okay, let's use our powers to get those lights up. And that's it. I mean, seriously, uh, the police start shooting at the rioters for shutting down the lights. <sighs> okay. I mean, you know, it's a, it, here's the problem. It says nothing about what they're going through. It says nothing about why they're there. It says nothing about uh, anything beyond, hey, look, these police are shooting at these, uh, at these what are now rioters when they, they shut everything down uh, before they're protesters. Then they become rioters. Now, the police shouldn't be openly firing at anybody. And then we get, and, and this has been a problem with me, and this has nothing to do with this book. This girl has a, a venom. This girl has a, and she actually says it's a venom. Um, everybody's got a symbiote these days, so I don't know. I just didn't care for it, um, mainly because I think it needed to go a little bit further like, this might have actually been better if it was a, a full eight-page short story. And that's one of the problems with this book is everything's only two, three, I think this one's three or four pages, and it still wastes them by not really giving us motivations and such. And I, I think that's a huge problem. If this was only three or four stories and it was expanded to eight pages or nine pages or whatever, given enough time to properly tell a story, this one might have actually been good. 
Okay, and next up we have a story where some kids are look to be robbing a convenience store. And uh, it seems to be owned by a member of the family. And they're attacked by vampires who are members of the family. That That is what's going on here. And then Blade pops in. All right, I'm going to be spinning my wheels here. Um, same thing. There's a lot of story that could be told here. And it could have been told through the dialogue. It could have been told through... Thought Bubbles, which is a dying trope, if not a dead trope in comic books these days. But unfortunately, it's just not. Uh, I wish it was. There, There is so much more potential in these uh, little vignettes than any, anything else. Um, while I've got you here, by all means, guys, don't forget to click like and all that kind of stuff. Share, share, share. But most importantly, comment, because that really is what helps out the algorithms. Alrighty, uh, I don't know. It's Blade. I, I wish it was better. I like Blade. When he's written well, but that goes for any character. Okay, and then we get to the storm uh, story. Ay vey. Okay, so what can I say about this? Um, now, if you know me, which uh, you know, if you've seen my stuff, you've read my stuff, you know I don't like what's going on with the uh, X Men these days, and I think that a lot of what is in here is not the fault of the writer. Um, and and this is uh, oh goodness, who is this? I'm looking in the credits trying to find out who wrote, but I can't see it. But anyway, um, this is not Storm. Storm tells uh, Storm tells Emma Frost, oh, I've got to do this myself. I'm like, wait a second, what? Why? Why do you have to go rescue a mutant by yourself? And I'm afraid to answer that question for myself because I think, in all honesty, it's going to be, a, it's going to be racial. It's going to be because, oh my gosh, this is a put-upon black girl. Which would make me think, why Storm? Because Storm doesn't care about race. Why use her? as? I mean, her surrogate daughter was Kitty Pride for the longest time. This could be a new one, but the race wouldn't matter. It could have been anybody. It could have been anyone. And, and Storm would feel the same way, at least the Storm I know. This new Hoxpox X-Men, I'm not a big fan of. They're villains. So I don't exactly know how Storm has changed. Maybe she very much is sitting in the middle of all these mutants saying, Aha! But these are the more put-upon mutants. The whole point of mutants is that they could have been anyone. If you were just some lanky, uh, awkward kid, if you were gay, if you were black, what, uh, Chinese, if you had a conjoined twin, the X-Men were you because they were the outsiders. And that was the beautiful thing about the X-Men that's being lost now. So anyway, with Storm going off uh, on this particular quest, it's, it's fine in itself. It really is, but I think the motivations were off. I think that's where the writer really got it wrong. Um, and once again, this is a testament, and this is really something that goes with the whole book. So I'm going to wrap it up now. The whole book is probably the best of these uh, legacy voices. I'm still not a big fan, but this one hurts because it should have been two or three stories, three, four stories, whatever, expanded, given more time to, or, or given more space to breathe, give more motivation for characters and so forth. Excuse me, just had pizza. Anyway, um, and I think that's where it falls flat. Some of these were, like the Hallmark card was just stupid and insipid. It's just bad. And uh, some of them showed potential. Like the one that I started off not really caring for, and by the end I'm like, hey, let's go see him fight that giant. Um, so there, there is potential here. Unfortunately, the book just doesn't live up to it. Uh, but that's just my opinion. What is yours? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, click like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, comment, comment, comment. That helps the algorithm. So, uh, and, and set your notifications because that also helps. Um, and if you don't mind helping out the channel, I've got a Ko-Fi. I know some of you don't like Patreon. I've got one of those too. Both links are in this, uh, sub the, the description there. Uh, drop a dollar in the till. It would help keep the lights on. helps keep making videos for you because this is the way I'm trying to make a living anyway. I'd like thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.